In this med mastery lesson, you'll master how to distinguish between anticholinergic and cholinergic syndromes. To introduce these toxicities, let me tell you a story. Two brothers, named Joey and Billy, are outside catching bugs one day. Joey, being the risk taker, swings his net at a bee, and the bee stings him several times. His skin becomes red and swollen. I'm so itchy, I better take some allergy medicine, he exclaims. He pulls out a bottle of diphenhydramine from his pocket and takes the entire bottle, thinking it would help him feel better faster. About 30 minutes later, Joey's pupils are large, his face is red, and his mouth is dry. He's confused and sees things that aren't there. Billy tells his brother, wait here, I'll go get help. While looking for an adult, he runs into a nearby shed in a neighbor's yard. Inside the shed, Billy sees a bottle with a bug on it. He thinks it's medicine that will help his brother feel better. But maybe I should take some too. Within five minutes, Billy starts to sweat, cry, and drool. He's having a hard time breathing and feels sick to his stomach. He suddenly needs to go to the bathroom. So what happened to these boys? Well, this story is a tale of two syndromes, anticholinergic and cholinergic toxicity. These syndromes are caused by abnormalities in the peripheral nervous system, which controls our rest and digest mode. In this mode, our pupils are small, our glands are wet, our intestines are moving and absorbing the food we ate, and our heart rate is slow to conserve our energy. Anticholinergic syndrome, most commonly caused by an overdose of diphenhydramine or other antihistamines, puts a stop to rest and digest. So what we see are dilated pupils, reduced gland secretion leading to dry mouth, eyes, and skin, slowed gastrointestinal movement, and an elevated heart rate. The increase in heart rate may also be accompanied by elevated blood pressure. As we learned previously, it's important to know what's going on with the heart. Not all anticholinergics cause conduction abnormalities, but some do. For example, diphenhydramine also blocks sodium channels, so you may see a widened QRS duration. If it's greater than 100 milliseconds, give sodium bicarbonate intravenously until the QRS narrows. An elevated heart rate should also prompt you to start intravenous fluids. Physostigmine is the true antidote for severe agitation in anticholinergic poisoning. While a small dose can be safely given to patients, it's best to discuss this treatment with your local poison information center or toxicology consultant, as it can have negative side effects if given in the wrong circumstance or given too quickly. On the other hand, cholinergic syndrome is most commonly caused by the ingestion of insecticides. And research suggests that children in migrant farmworker families are more likely to be exposed than children in non-farmworker families. Cholinergic syndrome increases the rest and digest mode. So we see constricted pupils, over-secretion from glands causing excessive salivation, tear formation, sweating, and fluid buildup in the airway, as well as increased intestinal motility causing vomiting and diarrhea, and further slowing of the heart rate. The decrease in heart rate may also lead to low blood pressure. The initial treatment is atropine if the patient is having difficulty breathing. This will raise the patient's heart rate and dry up the excess secretions, most importantly, in the lungs. And pralidoxime is the true antidote for cholinergic syndrome. But this should be discussed with your local poison information center or toxicology consultant. If too much is given, pralidoxime can actually cause anticholinergic syndrome and atropine must be given with pralidoxime. This is because pralidoxime can temporarily increase the rest and digest mode, and atropine prevents that from happening. Joey and Billy were treated at their local hospital and recovered well. They certainly learned from their mistakes. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.